Rookie Steelers tight end Darnell Washington is saying all the right things at OTAs. We'll talk about that and how he fits into the Steelers tight end room and why they might be the key to a balanced offense in 2023. I'm your host, Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting app, and especially on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day, because we give you your team every day. And today's episode is sponsored by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash NFL and you can enter the promo code LOCKEDONNFL, all caps, all one word word and they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler in with every order more on that later here on the lockdown Steelers podcast but i wanted to touch on the tight end position because we've talked about the excitement for more 12 personnel packages being rolled out into the Steelers offense we talked about the excitement even before the draft of the potential of getting darnell washington we thought the Steelers might have to spend one of their two second round draft picks on him. Turns out they didn't just need to get him in the third round, but they also could trade down to get him with how things played out. And in OTAs, he looks big. He looks menacing. He looks like the kind of guy that you want as an extra blocker on the field who could maybe turn into a receiving threat. And we've got a chance to talk to him a few times. And what I have to say is I'm impressed by the way that he carries himself. I'm impressed by the way that he talks about things because one thing I look for, it's OTAs. People try to ask for who looks the sharpest, who is running the best routes, who's doing this right. It is OTAs. It is football in shorts. It is not always the best uh, determining factors, very rarely the best determining factor of how someone's going to play in the long term. What I look for, especially from younger players, is how are they approaching the process? Are they taking it seriously every day? And then when you talk to them, how are they thinking critically about the challenges in front of them? Because... It's not just simple enough to come in and just play how they've played in college. They need to upgrade their game. They need because because however good you were in college, the NFL is better. The NFL is going to provide new challenges and you have to adapt to them. And how are you attempting to adapt to them? What are you changing about your work style and, and your work ethic to accommodate those changes? And that's something that I think is important to a lot of people. We've talked to Broderick Jones about it. We've talked to uh, uh, Joey Porter Jr. about it on that side. But when it comes to Darnell Washington, how is he handling it as a third round pick? And when we caught up with him on the two on Tuesday of the, the Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the, uh, the excuse me, the, fir, the Tuesday of the final week of OTAs for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Darnell Washington had some, I think, some good responses to our questions. Here is him when I asked him about what he's been working on and what he's been working to improve as a player himself and what he has to focus on to be a better tight end in the NFL in the Steelers locker room on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I, I say it for sure came with the footwork part. Um, you know, like, even though if you dominate a guy or get a pancake, you may not have the best of footwork, but I mean, coming from college, it's not this level. So I understand when I first got here, like I may look like I was the best blocking tight end, whatever it may be in college. But then when I got here, I was like, whoa, I got a lot of work to do. I seen myself in film and just going over it with coach and just cleaning up my footwork mainly. You said, what does it look like? Yeah, like, like as far as all the tasks uh -huh. that you have to accomplish to get better. Uh, I just say attention to detail. Uh, always go back to fundamentals. Uh, sometimes we we may it just may slip our minds, and but really just going back to the basics. So, really quick on that part of Darnell Washington, I really think a huge part of what he's talking about there. It's important that when he talks about yeah. I was pretty good at run blocking in, in college, but I have so much more to work on in the NFL. And he also talked about the work that he took to get there. It took a lot of a lot of effort in his part to get the footwork right to be good in college. And he's recognizing right away in OTAs, whoa, I got to do so much more if I want to play that level in the NFL. Some guys don't get that. Some guys come, come in, they think that their stuff is going to carry over. And even if they maybe see that right away, they don't adjust to it. And I, I want to put this out there right away too. 
Darnell Washington saying the right things. Everyone can say the right things if they really wanted to, but doing the right things and follow th following through on that is another step in the process. But as we do here on the Locked on Steelers pod podcast, we take everything step by step, one day at a time. So how I evaluate guys and how they're responding is how they're taking on this moment right here because that's all I can judge Darnell Washington on. And in that moment when he asked that there, he was very honest, gave a thoughtful answer, talked about what he's working to improve on. He talked about specifically about footwork and trying to get sharper there. He talked specifically about what he needs to do to be better to take on NFL defenders. That, to me, shows a young man who's coming into uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, an organization that obviously put a lot of faith in him, that, that drafted him in the third round, and he's not taking anything for granted. He's not sitting there saying, oh, yeah, well, I'll be fine. He is ready to take on the challenges of what's coming next. And I think that's a huge part of what the Steelers need right now in young guys who understand that, you know, have confidence in yourself. Because it's 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 not saying Darnell Washington doesn't believe that he's going to get there. It's just saying, hey, he knows that even though he was successful at this one level that was this, the lead up to what he's in the NFL, he's got more more space to grow. And you heard you hear him specifically start talking about the things that he needs to specifically grow in. Um, and you also hear him talking about, you know, how yeah, I, because my, my second question that I followed up with, if you couldn't hear it on the clip that I played there, I was asking about like, you know, cause he talked about route running and I'm like, how do you balance all of that? Because that sounds like a lot for a guy who was a really good tight end for Georgia, a national champion, a guy that played in you know, a lot of big games and made, a, and made big plays both in blocking and receiving that sounds like a lot to deal with to balance, you know, Hey, you don't just have to be, get better at blocking. You have to get better at route running. You have to get better at catching jump balls, how to handle NFL defenders, whether you're in the air or on the line, that's, that's a lot to deal with, but he was just like, it's, it's in the details. And I think those things sound very good. And maybe I think a part of why the Steelers were so ready to, to snag him up in the NFL draft, because even beyond his six, seven frame and his ability to go up and catch passes with one hand or his ability to kind of play that sixth offensive lineman spot and block guys, he, he possesses the character and he possesses the mentality that you want of a rookie who's going to be coming into your offense and finding a way to fit in with a young offense that includes a quarterback and Kenny Pickett, a, a fellow tight end, and Pat Fryer with a running back like Najee Harris, all guys who are young, a little bit further along the process and are trying to establish this new culture with the team. I think that there's a lot to be said about how, how Darnell Washington handled that, but he also handled a few other parts of this interview. Well, that's what we were talking about a little bit more as, the, as, the, as our talks went on. I want to talk about that because we also talked a little bit about his impression of Pat Fryermuth and what he saw from him and what he's taken from just seeing a few practices in working with Pat Fryermuth. All that and more we'll talk about in a minute here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. So don't go anywhere. we got a lot to talk about with the tight end position, how they fit together, and how the whole offense fits together. We'll do that in just a minute. But first, before we do any of that, I want to talk to you guys about our great sponsors at Bird Dogs. Now, what are Bird Dogs? Bird Dogs are a great clothing line that is here to make you look good. They use stretch catchy khaki shorts that are designed to help fit slimmer on you so that, uh, through the thigh and through the legs so that you get a truly sculpted look when you're wearing Bird Dogs. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. And Bird Dog fixed the, the fixed the issue of regular shorts being you know of being being too loose by helping make a more stiff restricting cotton that went with their shorts and they invented what's called a cloud knit fabric that's look that, that, that looks just like khaki but stretches so that you can get a way slimmer fit when, without having to sacrifice any movement with your shorts when you buy Bird Dogs and Bird Dogs also uses an anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and enter promo code locked on NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L all capital letters, all one word, and you'll get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you go to bird dogs right now and get you some great shorts. Back. 
back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our show. We're going to st- stay focusing about the tight ends. One thing we want to remind you guys, though, if you haven't already, please join in on our Cystic Fibrosis Foundation campaign as we raise money to help the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation to find a cure for cystic fibrosis, a condition that impacts over 10,000 Americans every year with a, 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 every every year we try to raise money to help find a cure for this cause if you can donate any money right now use the qr code on screen or go to the link that's on screen you can also find it in the description of this podcast or on youtube and you can click on that go donate any money that you can and if you donate at least ten dollars and you call in to our number 412-223-6644 you can get your chance to get your call on the air here on the Locked On Steelers podcast within a week of your donation at the at the latest. But thanks again to everyone who's donated because we've had a lot of don- donees so far. But let's get back into this, what I'm talking about with the Steelers tight ends. Now, something we, we I wanted to address with Darnell Washington was also what he's learned so far and what he's been impressed by Pat Frymuth. Now, Pat Frymuth is a guy who, when you, you watch Pat Frymuth, this guy is one of the better receiving tight ends in the NFL already. And he's just been in the league for two years when you go back over his last two seasons this man has amassed already 1229 receiving yards and nine touchdown receptions um he's been able to make big plays for the pittsburgh steelers already and if you go back even at his seven touchdown season as a rookie with with the uh the last season of ben roethlisberger that is the most touchdowns or excuse me the fifth most touchdowns by a rookie tight end in NFL history, tying himself with other guys like Eric Green, another former Steeler, and John Mackey. Granted, these are other times in the NFL, but important to say that they're guys who are ahead of him are guys like Mike Dicka and Rob Gronkowski uh, as as, uh, just some of the few guys that are ahead of him all time as their rookie touchdown stats. But I think part of what Pat Frymuth did very well for Ben Roethlisberger and for Kenny Pickett last year, it didn't manifest as much because, hey, it's a rookie quarterback. But Pat Frymuth got open. Pat Frymuth wasn't just a guy who went up and got the football. He knew how to set up his routes. He knew how to run his routes, but also set up defenders with other with routes that could fake them into thinking that he's going in different directions. That's something very sharp in Pat Frymuth's game that made him an asset for the Pittsburgh Steelers the last two years. That's also something that Darnell Washington isn't necessarily that adept at. He's more of a guy that's going to go up and get the tough jump ball battle. He's more of a guy that's going to have some great run blocking moments and and plow over guys but even in his best moments for georgia i think as a receiver it wasn't his route running it was kind of what he did after the ball when it was in his hands when he was able to just run through guys jump over guys stiff arm guys you know and, and work his way around them but as far as route running he had work to do and again when you ask him about it and what he learned about pat frymuth he has interesting things to say and he's taking notes while watching how Pat Frymuth operates. Here was Darnell Washington in the Steelers' locker room talking about just that, especially Pat Frymuth. Always in that area. Yeah, I mean, when I so me, I never really watched the NFL growing up, like I mentioned. Uh, but when I first saw Pat like in person running his routes, I was just like, he's super fluent. That's like where I want to be, like as in in and out of breaks, as in just releasing, as in everything he do when it comes to running routes. I was just like, he's super polished. So uh, one of the best tight ends that I've seen in person run routes. Um, but yeah, I mean. Can you, learn, can you learn that or is that just natural? I feel like it, I feel like it really comes with repetition. Um, the more you do it, the better you, you know, more fluent you are. Um, and just working on in and out of breaks and things like that, I feel like hopefully I'd learn it. Uh, that's my goal. Shout out to Mark Caboli of The Athletic, who was asking those questions there on the side there, if you could hear his voice. But um wanted to one, one, I think I think the one when you talk about Pat Frymuth, when you watch his tape, that guy does get open for a reason. It's not just because he's lost, you know, he's the defense loses him. It's because he loses the defense himself. He, he puts a lot of work into getting open. And that's why when we talk about the Steelers tight ends, the flexibility that it would have to have both of them on the field, along with two wide receivers and a, and a running back. 12 personnel is going to be the classic name for for it, but it won't be your simple double tight end formation where they both just line up on either side of the line of scrimmage and they're just book both bookending the offensive line or if they're lined up right next to each other. I, I think a lot of what the Steelers could deploy this year is Pat Frymuth motioning out to the slot, lining up in the slot, or even lining up outside the numbers and just using his ability to get open as a route runner to cause problems in defense. 
in the defense. And Darnell Washington, if you keep him in line, uh, you know, even if he's still developing as a, as a route runner, which he will be all season long, and I think even the season after that, but even as he develops, you can trust that Darnell Washington is going to at least be able to, if he's, if he's lining up on the line, he's going to either give you good pass protection, he's going to give you good run blocking, um, and he's a threat that someone has to account for. But those are the positions where I think a more traditional tight end who isn't the sharpest route runner can line up in and find success. Because again, at six foot seven with his ability to run with his with his size, with his strength, he's gonna be too fast for linebackers, too tall for too tall and big for defensive backs. And that provides the mismatch that we're talking about there. But Pat Frymuth also is a big guy. He's also a big guy that has good agility and he causes mismatches. But I also think that at some point, what the Steelers really need is an offense that's able to balance to balance so many different mismatches at different points. And we'll get to this in just a minute with how balanced this offense is, but creating so many mismatches that force defenses to have to kind of sell out on one particular job or two particular jobs that open up other possibilities. That's where I think the Pittsburgh Steelers offense could really shine this year is with the balance that they have. And I'll get to that balance in just a minute. That's my third segment here, but I'm sticking to what Darnell Washington is talking about. Back to my original point, him talking about how he's so impressed with Pat Frymuth's route, him talking about the footwork that he needs to do to be a better offensive line, a better blocker, not an offensive line, but a tight end who does block uh, with the offensive line. The impression that I get from him is a guy that's not settled with who he is, that recognizes he has a ways to go before he is the final product that he thinks he can be in the NFL. And I think all these are good signs. The Steelers have a good young rookie and a few good young rookies, as well as just good veterans who get what they're trying to put together. And that's so important, I think, in the long run of what the Steelers do. When you look at Darnell Washington and what he did, um, you know, as a as a as a collegiate player, uh, this was a guy who, when you go back and you look at what he did in in 2022, um, this man caught over 50 percent of both deep and medium passes when you look when you look at it. And he was targeted uh, beyond 10 yards, I believe, like 50 Mm, no, I think it's like 49% of the time he was, he was, he was, he was content. He was targeted beyond 10 yards of the line of scrimmage and he pulled in over 50% of those passes. So if you were, if, if, if uh, Georgia was throwing him a ball that was a bit deeper downfield to move the sticks, he was bringing it down 50% of the time, a pretty good rate, a pretty good rate there. When you, when you look at that and during that process all, all year long, this man only had two drops a good number to have in that department as well. So I don't think you're going to see a polished Darnell Washington. I don't think you're going to see him in a whole ton of formations in his rookie year. I think that he's going to be learning as the year goes on, but I do think you're going to see him implemented in a way that gives him the opportunity to show growth and to be a playmaker when called upon, but not necessarily be a staple of this offense. And I think that it'd be silly to expect him to be a staple of this offense when you have so many other talented guys on it already. And you've been adding different pieces, a different part. I still think the Steelers have a specific agenda and a specific strategy that they'll want to adhere to when things get going this year. We'll talk about that strategy and how it works with their balanced offense look and how that relates all to the tight end position in just a minute here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Wanted to continue my talk here about the tight ends helping balance this offense. Now, if you've been a long-time listener of this show or even a short-time listener, if you've listened over the past month or so, you've gotten the impression that I've been saying, hey, the key to this team, the key to this offense is having success in running the ball, but playing off that with play action and forcing defenses to kind of get into guessing games where they overcommit to the run or overcommit to the pass. And it opens up the opposite of their, of their choice uh, to make big plays. And that's where I think really the Steelers could get, could gain a lot of ground offensively this year. And again, Darnell Washington, I think plays an important role in that in rolling it out. And he might not be the number two guy right away. It still might be Zach Gentry uh, because he's known the team and he has, and, and they have expect expectations of him and he can, he's a, uh, he's a guy who I think can fit there, 
But when I look at Darnell Washington and the capabilities they bring, it is tough for me to pass that up and what he could grow to be for the Pittsburgh Steelers sooner than rather than later if you keep bringing his experience into the game. And again, we're not just talking about 12 personnel. We're talking about the flexibility of calling different formations, different uh, different players in for different rules. And if you have a tw- uh, have a, 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 for a formation where um, – uh, where Darnell Washington is lining up on the line and Pat Frymuth is lining up more like a wide receiver. I think that gives you more power and more flexibility and makes it the, the job tougher for, uh, for, for opponents to game plan for your offense. Because again, when we're talking about the big thing that I think that needs to be done more in that Canada's offense with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's play action. You look at the lack of play action last year. We've already talked about this a few times in the show. It is a huge part of what I think is generally, you know, you know, wrong with the Steelers offense right now. When we're looking at Matt Canada, we're looking at things and people want to blame him for everything under the sun. I'm like, listen, I don't blame him for everything here, but I do blame him for these things. And um, part of that was, I felt like there wasn't enough play action here. And one of the biggest beneficiaries of play action is the tight end position. You go back to the Steelers Colts playoff game in the Super Bowl 40 run divisional round the Steelers before the game, you know, had kind of psyched the Colts into this idea that they were going to try and ground this game out, ground and pound, out physical them. And in doing so, they kind of opened the Colts up for more play action looks, which got Heath Miller, Heinz Ward, Antoine Randall L. Those, those guys open for a young Ben Roethlisberger. I don't think it's going to need all that as far as like, you know, talking trash and getting them, getting teams to oversell. You just look at how the Pittsburgh Steelers have played over the past few years. They've relied a lot on Najee Harris. It's kind of forced their hand hand a little bit, and they've been, um, you know, they they've they've kind of run run their plays, and defenses have reacted to that. I've talked a lot about how when you study the 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 all twenty two tape, linebackers their first two steps are often to the line of scrimmage. They're looking to press. They're looking to attack. They're looking to stuff the run before anything else, and that makes it tough on Najee Harris. But if you have an offense that can consistently hit a tight end or anybody over the middle beyond them, it makes for a game-changing part of your offense because then defenses can't sit on the run game. And then that's when I think you can truly unlock a dangerous version of Kenny Pickett and this offense, and especially the Pittsburgh Steelers run game in the, in the long term. Now, again, I know that uh, the Steelers – uh, I, I know the Steelers have a lot of facets to this offense. They still have George Pickens. They still have Deontay Johnson. They have Najee Harris himself. They have this new revamped offensive line. Um, so I know that there's a lot of things that are going well for, for the Steelers right now, at least on paper. But again, I look back and I say, like, man, this is a this is an opportunity for the Steelers offense to reestablish who they could be for the future. And part of it is that balance. And I think, again, tight ends are the key to that balance. If you're able to run the ball with Darnell Washington on the field and you're able to to still max out on opportunities to make plays in the receiving game with Pat Frymuth, and you can also switch them up and who does what at times to confuse defenses, I, I think you give yourself a killer advantage. I think you give yourself a great advantage to the Steelers being able to win in certain situations where they weren't able to win before, where being able to maybe operate in the red zone better, get some better blocking, get some bigger plays, um, you know, through through the uh, uh, through through the air, where maybe when they get down to the red zone, where the Steelers weren't all that good last year, they get so many bigger bodies like Pat Frymuth, like Darnell Washington, even like Zach Gentry, and you say, hey, all you guys go to different parts of the end zone, they can't cover all of you guys. It's going to be up to Kenny Pickett to make the decision and. In my time covering Kenny Pickett, I think he's a good decision maker. He makes his mistakes, surely enough. We saw that in the first half of the season. But eventually he comes around on them, and he he works on them, and he works to improve them. And I think that's going to be a huge part of this. And I think the tight ends are going to be a huge part of this. Because, again, when you call play action, what part of the field is normally vacated? It's the middle part of the field. It's where the tight ends are running their seams, running their hook patterns, running, the, running most of their routes, starting to run their routes. Those are the things that I think. Um, are going to play into the Steelers' offense moving forward. And, they, and again, you look at Pat Frymuth, this is a guy who, um, you know, last year had about 732 receiving yards to only two touchdowns, but he regularly got open. And Darnell Washington is a guy who necessarily didn't have to do all of that. Um, I also think it's interesting when he talks about, you know, uh, uh, 
Pat Frymuth being one of the better route runners that uh, that that he uh, that, that he's seen when uh, Darnell Washington plays played next to Brock Bowers. And if you don't know who Brock Bowers is, go look him up um, in the in the NFL draft process. He's probably going to be the first tight end off the board next year. He might even be a first round top fifteen pick, maybe even top ten if people get really crazy with it. And he has a he has a great year. But Brock Bowers is a guy who everyone's talking about as a as a future tight end in the NFL. So for Darnell Washington, we're talking about Pat Frymuth, like he is, you know, this this top tier guy. And Darnell Washington has certainly seen his fair share of tight end talent over the years. I think it's a big praise for Pat Frymuth. I think it's a big sign, again, that he's willing to learn from Pat Frymuth and willing to learn in general to say, hey, I'm not good enough at this point. I cannot accept this and I have to keep moving forward. That fits into the mentality of a young Steelers team that is trying to move forward, that is trying to improve. But I think it also fits into the mentality of, the Steelers offense reshaping who they are and having players who are open to reshaping to that. And I think that when you, when all is said and done, uh, Darnell Washington is going to find a place with the Pittsburgh Steelers that makes him essential or not even essential, but helpful, useful, and, and a true asset, whether it comes to making blocks, making receptions, making big plays, making big blocks, all those types of things I think will be on the table for Darnell Washington and the Steelers tight ends. Um, and again, I wouldn't also rule out Zach Gentry having having a a role here. Zach Gentry was solid last year, and they brought him back for a solid price. So I, I think that that if you're a, if you're a a big fan of uh, some of these tight end players, and you don't want to see any one of them fade into the background, I wouldn't just rule any of them out just yet. Of course, Pat Fromm is going to be the starter. Uh, but I don't think Zach Gentry is necessarily going anywhere right away. I think that they're waiting to see how Darnell Washington does. And if he does great, cool. Then you have a great uh, two-headed monster at the tight end position. You move from there and how um, how how you want to proceed with, with, uh, um, with building the offense. Um, but by and large, to me, I think the Steelers uh, have set themselves up so that they don't have to worry about too much. They just, uh, outside of the organization, all they got to worry about is making sure that Darnell Washington – follows down the path that he's speaking on right now because again speaking on it is important you know, you know talking like you understand the process you trust the process you love the process those are important parts of it but how you continue to deal with it that will end up defining your nfl career we'll see how it defines darnell washington's career and again it's a step-by-step -step process grain of sand process when it comes to the tight end position especially when it comes to OTAs and all the things they have to learn we'll be on the second days of OTAs this week uh because uh we'll be at the Steelers facility on Wednesday and Thursday here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast stay tuned we got a lot of great stuff coming your way I'm your host Chris Carter follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette on University of Pittsburgh Athletics you can also watch this show on your favorite on your favorite podcasting app and on YouTube like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all your daily Monday through Friday episodes again I'll be back Thursday, talking about what happened Wednesday on OTAs and getting you ready as OTAs wrap up and we get ready for Steelers minicamp here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. 